So there are six environmental factors that can affect the garden and its performance. So I track these factors every day to give my garden the best chance of survival. So the environmental factors that can affect my garden are light, which is the data length and the amount of shade, uh, temperature, whether it's too hot or too cold, moisture, is it too wet or too dry, uh, diseases, and we have pests, large and small, and the fertility of the soil. So by keeping an eye on these six factors, we can steer our garden into a higher production. And over the course of the season, you will see me working with these six environmental factors to get the best possible yield. So let's take a look at each one. So light, I select a location that is good light for my garden before we ever get started. So what I'm looking for is minimum eight hours maybe up to 12 hours of just pure sunshine coming into this garden. Uh, the day length will affect the growth rate of our plants, and we have no control over that. That's just the seasonal piece that we have to work with. Okay, temperature. I have covers for too cold. I use shade covers for too hot. And this summer it can get up to 106 degrees uh, here in this building. So the key to getting the plants through the extreme temperatures is to know your forecast and have your, have your protection readily available. Okay, moisture, that's the next one, and it's in our direct control. Uh, the secret soil mix, our sandy loam, has good drainage, and it's very hard to overwater or to waterlog these gardens with rain. Usually the challenge is the other way, too dry, because the soil has good drainage, but that is what the plants thrive in. So I check the moisture in this garden every day, and if I have new seeds in the soil, I will check it in the evenings too, so twice a day. With a layer of mulch, you can cut your watering needs in half, and this is really important to us high desert dwellers. Okay, disease is the next one. I look at the plants every day to get a feel for what I consider is normal looking. Then I compare what I've seen in the past to what I am seeing today. And I ask myself, do I see holes, chew marks, wilting, discoloration, missing plants, sticky stuff, curly leaves? Do I see anything that's out of the normal? If the answer is yes, then I investigate further and get some help to diagnose the problems. Don't wait very long to get a problem solved. You can ask another gardener in your area, the folks at the garden centers or the county extension office. And anyone who is in our course can send a picture to us to get a diagnosis of a plant problem. Okay, pests are the next one. Pests come in many sizes. I do the same technique for pests as I do for diseases. I figure out what is normal looking and I look for things that are not normal. I will investigate to find the problem. And if you're seeing any, if you're not seeing anything during the day, then go out at night with your flashlight. The garden is a whole nother world at night. Most bugs will eat your plants at night. There are some great articles on uh, large pests and small pests on our farm's website at www.thelivingfarm.org. So if you want more information on that, you can go read some of those articles. Okay, the last one is fertility. In order for the plants to grow at a high rate, they must have ample supply of food. Because we are organic, we feed the soil microbes and they will in turn feed the plants. Our job is to make sure that there is enough nutrients for everybody to be happy. So if you'll pay attention to these six factors, your garden is going to have a much better chance of high production.